Okay, so today I would like to talk a little bit about modern IDEs and how do they work internally. So before I start, few yeah, let me check if it works. Yeah, it works. A um, few words about myself. So I'm Andrew Nestor. I'm software engineer in AWS in Amsterdam office, and I'm working there uh, building the project which is called AWS Cloud9. Uh, as it as it was mentioned before, it's a cloud-based IDE, so you can think of, I don't know, your favorite IDE, so it's the same, but it's in your browser. So you don't need to do any stuff on your local machine, so you just open your browser and can easily work. So that's why I would like to talk about IDEs today. So let's look at some examples. So you can see that, yeah, some developer types some piece of like Python code, and it gets like, like after completion, and stuff like that, so, and the question here, like, what is actually going on? So when you type something and like, yeah, how this completion from where it appears? So first of all, developer types code. So you have editor, which is like just editor. So you can insert some text there, insert your code there. Uh, and then ID sends some sort of request from this editor to somewhere to get this code completions. And completion list is returned. So the ultimate question is from where? Uh, and here comes LSP. So what LSP means is it stands for Language Server Protocol. So that's a protocol which was built by um, Microsoft, so it was created by Microsoft a few years ago when they were building Visual Studio Code. Uh, I guess lots of people heard about it. Uh, so they developed this Language Server Protocol um, to define sort of the way to communicate between IDs and um, some other, let's call them for now, some, something else which can provide you with all the language features. So what actually this protocol defines? First of all, it defines API between client and the server. So client in this case is ID. It can be any ID. It's not necessarily Visual Studio Code. It can be anything. Uh, and the server. So here comes the interesting part. So this server, it's called language server. It's essentially something that uh, provides you with all the, your fancy language features. And this server, yeah, as, as I said before, provides language features, for example, like, I don't know, code completions, uh, you know, signature help, um, definitions, and stuff like that, so many of them. Uh, and it's language specific. So each server, it usually, sometimes it can be like multi-language, but usually it's um, language specific, so for example, one server is for Python, one server is for, I don't know, Haskell, the other one for, I don't know, Java or JavaScript, whatever. And um, language server can be used with different clients, so they're client agnostic, so you have the server, it provides some API, and any clients or any IDs can use them. It can be, I don't know, it can be Visual Studio Code, it can be Cloud9, it can be Veeam, it can be pretty much everything. And the clients or ID can use different uh, language servers. So, for example, I want to provide, I want to have my ID and provide like, I don't know, features for five languages. So I just install five language server, connect them to my ID, and it works. Um, so right now, LSP protocol is supported by most of the major IDs, like you know, VS, Code, VS Code, AWS Code 9, Veeam, Emacs, Atom, Sublime, IntelliJ, or like PyCharm. With IntelliJ, it's a bit different story. They, they do not natively support it, but you, you, can have a pl you can install plugin there to provide the support and use your language server, and many, many, many others. So let's look at the, how it actually works, so how this like, protocol in a very simplified way works. So we have two parties here. So we have ID and we have language server. And between them, uh, they have this protocol defined. So they communicate between each other with JSON or RPC. Not sure how you guys are familiar with this uh, way of communicating, but that's essentially uh, a way to do remote procedure calls using JSONs. So it's open standard, so it's very widely used. And in this particular case, uh, it's used in, in this protocol. So let's look at very simplified examples. So, uh, yeah, user just opens document in ID. So what happens is that ID sends the request to a uh, language server and tells like, okay, you know, like developer opened the, uh, the file there, 
uh, please start to keep track of all the changes in this file. Because yeah, he can like type something and like break things and language server need to know about it. So AD identifies about it and the language ter servers start to uh, keep track of the changes. Then user uh, start to make changes. It again, on every change, pretty much on every uh, like letter you type, um, sometimes you can combine them, but anyway, to simplify, on every letter you type, uh, ID sends requests to language server saying like, okay, you know, developer changed something, please like re-index or update your stuff and like provide me with new information. Um, and here something else happens, so when uh, language server receives it, okay, there is some change here. So I need to, as I said, re-index stuff and see if I have any errors in the code and stuff like that. And it, uh, and language server publish and send notification back to ID when it published diagnostics. So diagnostics in this protocol, it means something like, um, you can think of like errors, warnings, maybe some like quick fixes if you have them, uh, and stuff like that. So essentially information about your project or status of your like project, if, if it's possible to build it and, and anything like that. So it happens on every change. So it's like two-way communication here. Okay, then for example, user want to trigger code completion. So now instead of notification to the language server, ID start to send requests because obviously it asks a language server to uh, get something and it waits for response. That's why it's request. So it sends request, uh, all data, um, all the information that you need to send to language server is essentially file uh, from where you triggered it and the line and character at which uh, you triggered code completion. Uh, so this information is enough for language server to find out uh, what kind of completions you can get. So um, after that, uh, language server sends back the response, which contains all your like code completions or anything like that. And then user chooses this completion. It triggers again the change because essentially when you like choose your code completion in your code, essentially you like insert some piece of code there, right? Um, and it triggers change again, and then it publishes diagnostic back again because something changed. Maybe yeah, it's non-valid code completion or something like that, whatever. So it needs still to publish some diagnostic. And then, for example, user closes the document because he made all the changes he needs. And then ID just tells language server, okay, yeah, forget about this file. We don't need to keep track of the changes here because it's not open anymore. So that's very, very roughly how it works. So let's look at some examples, like real examples of a demo. So what I'm gonna do here, so first of all, the first step, you need to choose the, uh, the LSP server implementation. So there are plenty of them for many languages. I think for Python right now, it's maybe four implementations. I mean, like the one that more or less uh, official, let's say so, and there are many, many others. So you can go and build your own if you want to. So um, it doesn't matter which one you choose. So I chose uh, the one which is called uh, PyLC. So essentially it's just Python mod module. Uh, you can easily run it. Uh, so you install it with pip. And then, uh, so the way to run it, so we first need to specify how you're gonna communicate between. So there are two options. One is TCP protocol, the other one standard input output. So in my case, I use TCP just because, just because. Um, and then you need to specify like host and port on which your uh, server will, will essentially listen to the incoming requests. So that, that's the first step. So uh, then you need to actually, uh, ID need to tell LSP server on which project developer works. So for this, uh, ID sends request, which, which is called initialize. And the only one parameter which you need to pass there is uh, pass to your project. So essentially what you tell LSP server is, okay, you know, here's the project I'm working on, here's the pass to it, please, uh, please start to monitor what's going on in this project. And then uh, L um, language server sends back the, um, the response. The, the only one like, important part in this response is capabilities. So capabilities means uh, it def um, LSP server can tell you what it can do from, from, um, 
from language perspective. So it hugely, I, I, yeah, I made it like way more smaller than it's true. It, it, it can be like you know, 30 or 40 uh, capabilities. But it, for example, it defines something like you can have code completion for me, or you can have uh, code de definition for me, or anything like that. So ID needs to know about it uh, because it needs to know what, what it can ask LSP server to, um, to get the information for. Okay, so let's look at the feature example. So let's start with code completion because I mentioned that a lot. So yeah, it's typical like code completion example. You type dot, you get some list of the code completions from, from your object. So in, in our case, it's hello. So you can see that you can have method and, and some uh, parameter there. Uh, so pretty much straightforward example. Nothing like it's not, I you know. It's not rocket science, right? Um, so what happens in this case, so when a uh, developer types dot there, ID sends request to get code completion. And as I mentioned before, the only information that it needs to know is text document pass, so for which file it was triggered, and position, essentially line and character. And then um, server sends back the items. So it essentially contains all the possible code completions. So it can be like a huge list of them. Um, and essentially, so all of these items contain like information as uh, documentation, like label. It can be also kind of code completion and stuff like that. The most important one, which you actually see in the ID, is label. That's what displayed to you. Um, and insert text. That's something that's going to be inserted when you choose code completion. So actually, LSP server tells you everything. So ID ID doesn't need to worry about all of that stuff. Okay, so that's pretty much how code completion works. Uh, okay, let's look at some other features. Maybe I'm not sure how you're familiar with go to definition and what it means. So essentially, feature uh, by itself is quite simple. So you can have a code, piece of code, for example, the class in your um, in your code base where you use it, and you want to find the place where it's actually defined. So you can have a huge code base, and you want to maybe make changes in the class which you use. So you can just click on the, uh, on the class you're interested, and you can just like, yeah, just jump to definition as it, as it did now. Um, so what happens now? So again, it's the same set of parameters. So it's just different method. So it's again, pass from which it was triggered and the position it, uh, from which it was triggered. And then LSP knows, um, what kind of like language entry it was, and then it can provide you with information where it was defined. So it provides you uh, URI, where it was defined. So in our case, it's a file called hello.py, and it provides range from where to where it was defined. So in our case, it's line zero, which is in ID, it's line one, because we, in, we want to provide developers with like non-zero baseline. So. Um, so it can be like multiple ranges because in some languages you can have multiple definitions for the same uh, classes or stuff like that, but for Python it's, it's usually one. Um, that's, I guess, all about the code definition. Let's look at signature help. So this is something which, for example, I personally like a lot. Um, so what happens is that you trigger code completion and you want to know which parameters you need to pass. And I personally don't want to go and check like the class which I'm using and then see like what parameters do I need to pass. Uh, that's why uh, ID can, um, can provide you with information uh, which parameters you need to pass there. So this is what called uh, essentially signature help. So again, same set of parameters, super boring. So for ID, it's no work almost. Um, and um, it just meta changes again, it, it's called signature help, hopefully. Um, and then it provides you uh, with signatures, which it can have for this, um, uh, for this method. So it might be multiple signatures uh, for languages like I know, Java, for example. You can have, or C, C++, sorry. Uh, you can have multiple uh, definitions for the same uh, method, and that's why you can have multiple signatures. Um, in our case, yeah, it returns you like uh, one definition with some documentations, with label, how, how it's supposed to look in the ID, and the parameters which you need to pass there. Okay, um, document symbols. So that's 
hopefully that's something a little bit different. So not sure if you ever used something like this, but for example, you have your class. In, in this example, it's quite small class, so it has only two methods. Now it's going to be third one. Um, and sometimes if you have like huge class or huge file, you want to get all the language entries which you have in this class, like all the classes defined uh, in this file or all the methods, variables, and stuff like that. So in ID, it looks something like you can uh, essentially in your um, ID UI, you can like type something and see the list of the files defined there. So you can see now it's, it's going to um, add one more method and it's going to update uh, the list which is uh, viewed in the um, in the ID UI. So you can see there, there is now three methods there instead of instead of two before. So how it works? So it works a little bit different. So now you don't care about position because you care only about the file. So you want to have the content on the file here. So you just pass the, uh, uh, to LSP server, like, here's the file which I have. Please get me all the symbols uh, which you can have there. And I'm going to search over them or anything like that. Um, and then it returns. I subtracted it to one, but it usually in, in real examples, it's like a huge list of the uh, symbols. Sometimes it can go to, to thousands and stuff like that. Uh, and again, it defines the file. Uh, it defines the name of the symbol and range in, in which it was defined because most probably you want to navigate uh, through the, the symbols quickly. Um, yeah, so I showed only like four examples. Uh, there are around, I'm not sure how many is here, but I think it's around like 20 or something like this, which you can get for free from LSP server if you just have this protocol enabled in your ID so you can get it for free. Um, some of my favorite is just like rename, for example. You can do some refac nice refactoring or formatting, for example. You can ask LSP server to reformat your code. Um, so that, that's like my personal, my personal favorite. Okay, so what can you do next with all of this? So, okay, yeah, you have this LSP protocol, so who cares, right? So, um, First of all, you, uh, you can start to contribute to language tools. So, uh, for example, you use like a VS Code or PyCharm or whatever, and you're not happy with uh, language features uh, which you can have there, or you want to add something more. You can just go because it, all of the pretty much all of the language servers are open source on GitHub or any other places. You can just go there and start to contribute and just improve not only your personal uh, experience, but experience for many other developers. So we can have a huge impact. So for example, when we were developing um, AWS Cloud9, so in the, uh, we contributed a lot to the like, community just because we want to have more features. Uh, and I mean, it, we, we helped not only our product, we helped like many, many others. So, uh, it really feels good to help and have, have a huge impact on, on the, on the like, developer experience because we spend all of our time in IDs and I really personally feel that it should be really, really good experience. Second of all, if you use some ID which is not um, so like developer or, used to, or you even can start build your own uh, ID. So you can just go and write plugins for, uh, for your favorite ID. Uh, to add more language support. For example, you, you're a fan of some, some um, not so popular language, for example, as I know, I know examples of people building uh, LSP servers for uh, Julia language, for example, or uh, LSP servers for um, CloudFormation. I'm not sure if you're familiar with AWS CloudFormation, but essentially it's, um, it's special language to define your infrastructure. So. And you can build it for pretty much everything. So you can even build you know, from Markdown for anything. So if you want to get your ID smarter, you can just go write plugin and it will start to work. And of, obviously you can learn even more. So to start, I think the best resources for you are gonna be obviously Microsoft documentation of the um, protocol itself. It's very well defined. It's, it has lots of examples there. Uh, it's, it might be even interesting to read. Um, and uh, second of all, you can look at the examples uh, from my presentation there. So it's on my GitHub, so you can go there, essentially start to run it and tweak something and see how it actually uh, changes something and, and stuff like that. 
So yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Yeah, any questions?